Social Economic Rights and Accountability Project has called on President Bola Tinibu to withhold allocations to states that have failed to conduct credible elections, credible local government elections. Recall that, that on October 5, elections were held at the grassroots levels in some states, including Rivers, Benue, Akwaibom, and Jigawa. Most states, however, are yet to conduct local government polls and still receive allocations for their respective cons local councils. Serap, displeased by the development, described the action of some state governors as wrong. In a statement by Deputy Director Kolawole Oluwadare on Sunday, Serap asked Tinibu to direct the Minister of Finance and Coordinating Minister of Economy, Olawale Edun, to immediately withhold federal allocations to states that have failed and refused to conduct credible local government elections. The organization also asked the president to ensure that any allocations from the federal account is paid only to democratically elected local government councils and no other body or institution. Serap urged the president to publish details of the number of local government councils that have directly received federal allocations and whether the councils are democratically elected as provided for by the Nigerian Constitution 1999 as amended and ordered by the Supreme Court in its judgment of 11 July 2024. Ndamzi, what do you have to say by this statement by Serap? Well, I, I want to encourage uh, Serap to channel their diplomatic request to the National Assembly. National Assembly should, you know, should internalize what Serap is saying. Because one, the president, the president is not constitutionally empowered to withhold the funds of the LGAs, mm. even though the Supreme Court have ordered that uh, uh, LGAs that are not democratically elected shouldn't receive funds, okay? Yes, the idea of setup is a good one, but the most important thing is strengthening that position using the instrumentality of the law. So, this calls for concern. There is no way setup will expect credible pools from the LGAs. It is not possible. Nobody should even contemplate that in Nigeria, that any state governor will organize a credible pool for the LGS. It's not going to happen in this country. <laughs> not going to happen. Unless they review that section, strip the governors of that power, either set up a local government election commission or return the powers back to independent natural electoral commission that is the only way we can see something near credibility in the lg elections we, we we may not totally have a credible election because even in the national elections we can't find credibility in the election but with INEC conducting it it will be powerful in the LGs. the local government chairman will be powerful they will understand their roles and functions of a chairman. But in this regard, powers flowing from the governor to them, they see themselves as stooges of the governor. So there is no way that can happen. And I wouldn't advise the president to withhold any funds because if you withhold funds meant for the local people, the local people suffer. The local people are the civil servants at the local level. So withholding their funds, it means you are advising the presidency to starve millions of homes in Nigeria. So I will be of the view that governors who have not conducted LG elections in their state should please do that hastily so we can pass this phase. And if they, and and if they don't do it, the federal government should still go ahead and make allocations available to them? No, if, 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 if I were to be the president and this situation arises, I will only release funds meant for salaries. 
Okay. Yes, I can even ask the and, Minister and of then Finance. The, 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 the local government chairman, you know, might decide not to pay these salaries. Lorisha. I mean, state governments are owing salaries and, and nothing has happened. Lorisha. Yes. If a state refuses to conduct local government election, I am and I am the president. Mm -hmm. I can pay the civil servants in that in that those LGAs okay. without the money passing through the governor or the local government chairman. All right. See, okay. the right thing needs to be done in this country. It's not as if we don't know how these things should be done. We know, but those whom we trust these responsibilities to have failed us in all ramification. That is the truth. Who says that they cannot boycott the governors and pay the civil servants directly? That will even serve as deterrent <coughs> to those who doesn't want to. But with the Supreme Court judgment and what has happened, I think uh, a whistle was blown and all of them are running the marathon on conducting local government. All elections. right. Now, Serap raised two concerns. He said to withhold um, allocation from states that failed to conduct credible elections. And he also said states that refuse to conduct credible elections. Failed and refuse is not the same. Yes. Failed means elections were conducted, but they are not, not credible. credible. Then, on the other hand, refuses that the, the they elections did not, they was not even, uh, yeah. So now, when you look at it critically, there are two sections to this. Do you see um, states that have questionable local government elections or elections that are right now on, on post-election tribunal, do you see the federal government paying allocations to them? Yes, just like the instruction of the Supreme Court, the judgment, mm -hmm. the ruling of the Supreme Court was very clear. And the state governors have complied in conducting this election. So whether it was a sham or not, the same consequential. Is, all the elections in this, all the local government elections in this country, beginning from 1999 to date, we have never had any that is near credible. All of them are all a sham. All had always been a selective process. Mm. Just like what happened in River State was a selective process. Election was never conducted by RISEC, and it is so shameful what happened last Saturday. No, well, but some people are also rejoicing at the election, and they said it's, no, it's no, credible. You know, you know, I, I have come to realize in this country that we, we have youths that only serve uh, those favoring them. If it is favoring them, they are clapping. Hmm. If, direct, if they are directly affected, they are clapping. But if it doesn't favor them, they say otherwise. But it's high time youths in this country are discouraged to take sides with politicians. We should look at what can improve good governance in the country? Because if we have good governance, it means we will have developments coming to the grassroots. But if the good governance is not there, the politicians will be doing their thing, divide and rule, and pocket the remaining. So it should be discouraged. And, and believe me, it has become a trend. All right. All right. Now, you, you spoke about River State. Uh, you used River State as, a, as an example of a state that, according to you, did not conduct a credible elections. Now, um, of course, the state, uh, the post-election matters, like you have said, will still end at the state level. And the state, you said the states, um, the state high courts, you have said that they are under the influence of the state government. Now, River State has a pre-election matter. Can that pre-election matter have impact on this local government elect on this local government chairman moving forward? Do you see this pre-election matter being escalated to probably because the, the court had told Risiek to comply with the Electoral Act. And the court faulted RISTX compliance with the procedures laid down and stipulated in electoral law, right? And now RISTX did not comply 
to, to the best of our knowledge, RISEC did not comply to the court order. Do you see an, a, a, the, the pre-election matter being escalated to probably contempt of court against the RISEC and the state government? If that happens, is it going to have any direct impact on this inaugurated chairman? Considering, again, that APC in this instance they are not stakeholders in this election. I mean, the Emeka, the Tony Okocha led APC that started this litigation, litigation. They are not stakeholders in this election and as such cannot um, uh, uh, raise any post-election matter. But can they build on the pre-election matter, you know, escalate it and how is it going to affect this newly elected chairman? Yes, thank you. Before the election, was conducted, there were issues, there were disputes, which uh, the Tony Okocha faction then raised. These issues were raised, and research went ahead to do what they did. Then secondly, I, I want to react on Tony Okocha's position before the uh, before the judgment that brought in Emeka Beke. Mm -hmm. As at the time the matter went to court, Tony Kocha was the caretaker chairman. He was in charge of APC in River State, duly recognized by the law. So his team instituted that action in court. Mm -hmm. And nobody can terminate the lifeline of that action, even though today the court has said and Mecca Mecca Beke Beke is, in is in charge of the party. Okay? That action remains alive. You cannot throw away that matter because Emeka Beke now heads the party and is, and is in support of the state government. That action in court is alive. That action can get to the Supreme Court. And since it is a pre-election matter, it will have effect on the elected chairman. It has happened here in River State before. Okay. During Amechi, like I said before, chairman actually, you know, uh, we are sworn in and they didn't last in office. All right. So moving forward, uh, you mentioned earlier that Serap should uh, focus on pushing this uh, statement or their concerns to the National Assembly to ensure that it is legitimized by being. Um, enshrined in the constitution. constitution of Nigeria. So far, Serap to a large extent has been more of making calls, you know, playing the role of a watchdog, calling out things and all that. But do you actually see Serap pushing this to that level? That's on one hand. On the other hand, why are Nigerians not loud enough in this constitutional amendment that is so dearly needed at this point? Thank you. I, I will begin with Serap. I give kudos to Serap with all they do for our country, Nigeria. Mm. Serap has really, you know, exposed Nigerians to the use of government. And uh, we hail them, we give them the kudos. We'll also encourage Serap to, 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 to keep conscientizing the people, to keep shouting on the government, criticizing the government to do the right thing. And also, the government on its part, the National Assembly, the senators in particular, they have abdicated the role and they have refused to listen even most times when Syrup, you know, comes up with positions. They have blatantly refused to listen. And the reason, Nigeria, if you watch, Majority of Nigerians are not even aware that the National Assembly is, you know, making uh, moves to review our constitution. Probably because the National Assembly is not loud enough about it. I, see, Laurentia, the National Assembly have ill intent. Most of the National Assembly members want to be governor. So if the push some, is the way... Some, it's some want to retain their position. So if they come up with good electoral laws, it will affect so many of them. So many are not even popular even in their Even returning officers as well. 
as yes. they want, they, they are returning. The, they are they return, to so return. many return, intend to return as second. And some second of them have anointed, they want to Some of them want to be governors. governor. So you see, if they allow the process to run well, it will affect them because they know they have failed the people. They are not popular in their various constituencies and their states. Mm. So if the election is allowed to be credible, they can win even in their wards. Right. I can challenge you that over 70% of the National Assembly members there, if you allow credible election in Nigeria, mm. they will not win their wards. Mm.